Okay, so welcome back. This is part three in our series where we show you how to write your very first, very simple software application. And I encourage you to watch part one and part two. In part one, we show you how to download and install this very, very wonderful Microsoft Visual Studio. It's called an IDE, and it makes it very easy to write your code, especially if you're new. There's a lot of drag and drop you can do to get things to work. And uh, we show you how to set all that up. And in part two, we show you how to develop the simple application we have here. Here's a few lines of code. And we show you how to develop this application that basically in real time charts a sine wave. And you can see it's got real time updates. And it really doesn't take a lot of code. And it's great for your first application to show you how to do simple stuff and how to do charts. So. In this video, we're going to show you how to, instead of plotting this sine wave that we generated in the code, we're going to show you how to connect to an external device. In our case, we're going to use an Arduino, but uh, any device that you can connect up over your serial USB COM port and grab data, and we're going to chart that data over time. Now, in previous videos, I've done a lot of um, videos talking about grabbing data over the USB from an Arduino or other devices, so I encourage you to look at those. But here we're going to show you a very simple way to just do some drag and drop and set up a COM port so that you can pull in data and just plot it directly on your chart. So here we have the application we developed in the previous video. And I've done a little bit of cleanup here to make things a little bit easier to understand. But basically, we've got our using statements we discussed. Basically, we're referencing the libraries we're going to need to get the functionality in our software. So for example, we're going to need charting. We're going to need to access the library for charting and so on. And then here, we're just setting up some variables we're going to use in our software. And in the previous video, we set up these two lists of doubles which define the time values or the x-axis values and the sine value values or the y-axis values. And as we get the new values, as we calculate the new values every time step, we're going to stick them in these lists and then we're going we're gonna to chart what's in these lists. So that hasn't changed. Um, I've added these three variables since the last video. These are the interim values for the time value as we calculate a new value every time step and then for the time and then every uh, a new sign value for every um, time step. And I'm just initializing those to zero. I've also added another variable called frequency in Hertz, which defines the frequency of the sine wave we're going to plot. And I'm setting it to 0.2 Hertz, which means one cycle in 0.2 seconds or five seconds for one cycle. So that basically just sets everything up. And then we go into our form one. And when you start up a new form one, it comes with this initialized component. That's some internal stuff it does. And we just added um, some lines of code here to enable the timer. Again, we set up a timer to tap our software on the shoulder and say, hey, your timer has timed out. I know you want to do something, in our case, every two tenths of a second. Uh, go do it. So we had to enable that timer. Timer enabled equals true. And then there's a couple lines here to set up our chart. And in the previous video, we said we need this line of code to tell it we don't want a bar chart. It defaults to a bar chart. We want a line chart. So we use this line of code. And then I also added this other line of code to define the thickness of the line that we're going to plot. It starts out with a value of 1, which is a very narrow line. But this gives it a little bit of thickness, so it's easier to view. And here, the last section of the code is what's called the event handler. And we set up our system timer, so every two-tenths of a second, it's going to jump over here, and it's going to execute whatever code is in this event handler. And what we're going to do is we said we have to calculate a new value of time and a new value of the sign value so we can plot them. All right. So our time value is going to be the old time value, and that starts out at 0 up here. And we're going to increment it by 2 tenths of a second, because each timer tick is 2 tenths of a second. Previously, I had it at 1 second. You can put it whatever you want, but I just, I'm putting it now so that it matches the actual time. So we're incrementing to a new time value, and we want to calculate a new sign value for that time. 
So our sine value was this 10 times math sine, 2 times pi times the frequency in hertz that we defined up here, times our new time value, all right? So we have our new time value, our new sine wave value, and we're just going to add those to the end of our list of x values and y values. And then to chart those, we have this simple line of code that says uh, data bind x, y to these two lists. And you're, you're binding it to the time values, which is the x vals list, and then the y vals, which is the sine values. So this is going to do the actual charting. And that's about it for the code. So we can run it. And you can see it's updating. Here's our um, sine wave. You can see right here at five seconds, we're at one cycle. Here's 10 seconds, two cycles, you can see. So it's five seconds per cycle, and we're just updating that in real time. So in this video, what we're going to do is instead of plotting this arbitrary sine wave, what we're going to do is we are going to replace this with data coming into our USB COM port. So we're going to have everything the same. The only thing that's going to be different is the value of the X, of the Y vals, and that's going to correspond to data coming in from the serial port. So now, um, obviously, we're going to have to figure out how to get data from the serial port. And thankfully, in Visual Studio, it's very, very simple to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Form 1 and click on that. And here we are. We've got our chart and our form. And what we want to do is drag and drop a serial port object. You see, we've got a timer from before. So we go into the toolbox and we can scroll down and you can see down here it says serial port. Left click, drag onto the form, make, you, make sure you drag onto the form and it will add a serial port down here. So we've got a new serial port device and it's pretty much all set to go. And if we go over here to the properties, you can see it's called name is serial port one. It defaults to a baud rate of 9600. Uh, eight bits, and the important thing is we're going to have to give it a port name. So right now it's at COM1, and we're going to have to figure out, well, I've got my device, Arduino or whatever, plugged into a COM port, my USB port. I need to figure out what COM port it is. So we're going to have to figure out what this value is. So to do that, we go into device manager in Windows and you, you can see we'll get this list of devices and go down to ports, COM and LPT and I have two serial devices. Right now I've got two Arduinos hooked up but I know the one I'm going to be using for this is COM3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to COM3. So I overwrite the one with a three. So now I've got my port set up to be COM3. So now I've got my serial port and I'm pretty much ready to go. I just need to read data from the serial port every time I get this timer tick event. The first thing we need to do is we need to open the COM port. We need to tell the, the software that, hey, we need to open the COM port so we can read data. So what we're going to do is we're going to say serial port 1. And you can see it knows that there's a serial port 1. But you're going to have to type in the actual name of the serial port, dot open with parentheses, and that will open the serial port. So now it's ready to read data from the serial port. We've got the port open, so what we're going to have to do every two-tenths of a second, in order to calculate the sine val, we're going to comment out the sine val, and instead, we are going to say we have a string called input data equals serial port one dot read line. And every two tenths of a second, it's going to grab whatever's in the serial port and read it, and it is going to assign that to the variable input data. So now all we have to do is we have to say, okay, convert that string of data into a double, and we can then plot it. So now we're going to say sine val equals convert dot to double input data. And now we have taken that 
uh, string of data and converted it to a double, and now it is the same, it's a number just like we had before, but instead of a sine wave, it is a variable, it is a value from the COM port. So now with only those few lines of code, we should be all set to plot whatever data is coming into the COM port. Now, in this case, I have programmed my Arduino to send uh, values of frequency that it measures from our wall outlet voltage. And I previously did a series on developing a C-sharp application that measures frequency. So I encourage you to take a look at that. But basically, it is sending data measurements of frequency, usually around 60.0 hertz. And it's sending the strings of, of values over the COM port. So what we're doing is we're converting those values that are like 59.9 or 60 around that range to, to doubles and plotting it. So we should be getting a graph, a real-time graph that shows values coming in that are right around 60 hertz. So let's start this and see what we get. Aha, uh -huh. so you can see we're getting updates, but here we have, they're all around 60 hertz. Now what we might want to do is we might want to change the minimum and maximum values of this of this chart on the y-axis because it's going from 0 to 80 and the area of interest is around 60 hertz. So what we can do is we can add some more lines of code here to set up the chart and these lines will set the minimum and maximum of that x-axis to 59.8 for a minimum and 60.2 for a maximum. So I'll get rid of these um, comment lines. So now we should have new minimum and maximum. So we can run it again. And you can see it does. It goes from 60.2 down to 59.8. And here's the real-time data coming uh, from the frequency measurement of the wall outlet. So in just a few lines of code, we've got this really nice real-time measurement coming from our Arduino that will um, update and chart in real time. Now, one other thing we can do is you can see we're updating, we're adding to the latest value of the um, value coming in, but we're not getting rid of the uh, first value. So what we want to do is we want to scroll. And to scroll is we, when, every time we add a value, we want to drop a value off the beginning so that this thing scrolls. So we can do that in very simple way. Every time we get a tick of the timer, we can automatically remove um, the zeroth value of that list. So we're going to do what's called an if statement. If time val is greater than, we'll say 10 seconds, then we're going to remove the zeroth element of each list. X vals dot remove at zero. And that is going to remove the zeroth value while we've just added the latest value. And we're going to do the same for the Y vals. Y vals dot remove at zero. So we're adding up here and then we're removing the initial elements here. So that would get, should give us a scrolling chart. So we'll run it again and you can see when we get up to about 10 seconds, we should start scrolling. And we're up to four seconds, six seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds. And you can see now we started scrolling. So very easy. We've now got actual real-time data coming from the COM port. We're scrolling it, and all it took was drag and drop the COM port and do some setup, and you're all set to go. So um, if you have gotten to this point, I know very few people actually get to the end of these lessons and actually fewer actually write the code. But if you've actually written this code and you've been successful, uh, appreciate if you let me know if um, you've had some good results. I rarely get any comments about, yeah, I wrote the code myself. So otherwise, if you like any of these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, let others know that we're here so we get some more views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.